Recently, there is an opinion piece published in the Wall Street Journal that argued that not only do you not need a million dollars to retire comfortably in the United States, but in fact, you can get by on much, much less. Let's jump in and look at this article that was written by Andrew Briggs and see what we can learn from it. So Mr. Briggs opens his, his article saying that according to a recent Northwestern Mutual study, most Americans think that you need to have about $1.5 million to retire comfortably. And then he points out that there's a huge difference between what people think that they need and what they really have. And according to Survey a Consumer Finance Report, which is published by the Federal Reserve and is, is great data, the average U.S. adult has only saved a little less than $90,000 for retirement. And Mr. Briggs is looking at this data and saying, so what's the reality? What kind of retirement are folks having when they retire with $100,000 or less? Now, I should say I don't agree with all this. The facts are definitely solid in this, but I think it's worthwhile for us to explore it. And there are some learnings that we can tease out. And then be sure to stay to the end because Mr. Briggs was also involved in a controversial view of his views of 401ks, which are another important pillar to Americans' retirement. So according to a Wall Street Journal study, almost 80% of Americans have less than $100,000 save for retirement. And so this meshes up with what the author is saying, what Mr. Briggs is saying about, you know, most people don't have that. That's what this chart shows that, you know, almost half of Americans report that they have no money saved for retirement. Almost 9% say they have less than 10,000. 13% say they have 10,000 to 50,000. And seven and a half percent say they have less than 100,000. So collectively, that's about 80% with less than $100,000. But then he, he looks at the data and not only does the Federal Reserve look at how much money people have saved for retirement, but they ask important questions about the quality of life and whether people feel financially secure. And one of those questions is, are they doing okay financially? Are they living comfortably? Or are they having financial hardships? And in this study, it shows that very few people are reporting having financial hardships, that the vast majority of people are saying that they're doing okay. 86% were either doing okay or living comfortably. And this is for the subgroup with fifty dollars to $100,000 in savings. So quite a bit less than the million dollars or the million and a half that American surveyed say that they need. So of the people in retirement, 93% said that they were doing okay or living comfortably overall. And that's for seniors with more than $10,000. And then there was a subgroup of people with fifty to $100,000. And only 3% said they found it hard to get by. 11% said that they were just getting by. So that's a little less than 15%. And the other 86% said that they were either doing okay Okay, or living comfortably. So Mr. Briggs looks at that and says, let's look at the reality. Let's look at people that are retired and have fifty dollars to $100,000 in savings. And 86% are saying that they're doing okay or living comfortably. Now, again, I'm not arguing that you only need $100,000 in savings. None of what I'm sharing in any of my videos is financial advice, but I do think it's important that we look at this. So then the question is, how can it be that people with less than $100,000 are living comfortably. I mean, if you think about it, if when people retire, they have a 25-year life expectancy, even at just $10,000 a year, that's $250,000. So how is it? And one of the things that Mr. Briggs would argue is Social Security is stepping up at a level that more so that in the past, according to Mr. Briggs, the average couple retiring in 2022 received total annual benefits of almost $46,000. And that's up from around $34,600 in today's dollars. So both of these are apples to apples, $46,000 today and retiring in 2022, I should say, versus $34,600 in 2000. 
And Mr. Briggs goes on to say, you know, that's not extravagant, but that's a, a significant foundation from which seniors can build on. Now, how does that compare with the data that I've shared in videos in the past? So the average Social Security check in the United States, it changes every month. But as of January 2024, the average Social Security check was $1,907. So let's call that $2,000. So an individual would get about $2,000 a month. So let's call that $24,000. So that would be for two individuals that are married. And Mr. Briggs talks about the average married couple making $46,000. And I'm sure his date is right. But if you took two people that each had a Social Security benefit of $2,000 a month, that would equal $48,000 between the two of them. So it's right in the ballpark. I thought you might also find it interesting to see what is the average Social Security check by age? So for people that are 62 years old, that check size is just a little under $13. This is per individual. 63, it's a little over $1,300, $1,339. 64, it's a little under $1,500. 65, it's a little over $1,500, $1,563. At 66, $1,740 is that average check. 67, it's $1,884. 68, it's a little under $2,000, $1,948. 69, it stays about the same, $1,000. 945. And then at 70 years old, it goes to $2,038. So at full retirement age, you get 100% of your Social Security benefit. If you retire early at 62, you get 70%. And then for every year that you wait past your full retirement age, your Social Security, your monthly benefit is going to increase by eight percentage points a year. And after 70, it no longer increases by that 8%. So that's what the data shows. And, you know, $46,000 It's tough to get by in the United States. And as Mr. Briggs points out, certainly not extravagant, but that's the foundation to it. And he goes on to share his thoughts on planners and how the pre-retirement income is spent. And in the U.S., it estimates that a couple earning about $83,000 a year with two children spend $26,000 annually providing food, housing, health care, and other needs. And that's when you have young kids at home, that's you can't spend money on yourself for that. And he would argue that, you know, once the kids leave the home, then mom and dad have that money to, to spend on their retirement and to meet their needs. And so while many people might say, I need 80% of what I was making before I retired, Mr. Briggs argues that Social Security is replacing about 60%. So that's that foundation of those living expenses. And so his argument is that parents need less than they think they do to supplement their retirement with Social Security. Now, I do want to caution, Social Security was never designed, nor is it today, to provide all of our retirement retirement savings. Yeah, I think it's important to save what you can. And I think it's important that we save at least 20%. And I know that's hard to do. Most of us were brought up saying, save 10% and you'll be fine. And unfortunately, in today's reality, with few of us getting pensions anymore, with many of us having our social security taxed, I think we do what we can, but the aspirational goal is to save 20% if we can. So, We've heard from Mr. Briggs before. In fact, I did a video on him before I reach out on one of his studies with one of his partners or a colleague, I should say. I do want to also point out the USA Today also picked up, do we really need a million dollars in retirement savings? So there's that article that you might want to read as well as the article in the Wall Street Journal. But that same author from USA Today, a couple months earlier, put out an article, is the government going to take away my 401k? And that was built off of a tweet that went viral by Mr. Briggs and his co-author of that paper, Alicia Manel, where they argue that many of the benefits, the tax benefits of allowing 401ks go to the highest earners. And they say that that money would be best spent to, rather than give tax breaks to wealthiest Americans, they say their argument is that money would be better spent shoring up Social Security. So you can watch that video if you'd like to. But Mr. Briggs is an economist 
fairness, I should mention that he works, he's a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and he has some controversial views, but I applaud him for putting out controversial views because I think we need to talk about this. I think the financial planning industry would do the public a disservice if we just hard and fast said, boy, if you don't have a million dollars saved for retirement, you're going to have a tough retirement. So I applaud Mr. Briggs for touching the third rail on a couple controversial topics and bringing this conversation to the forefront. I think it's an important conversation. I thank him for that. And I also think an important conversation for Americans to have is we for too long have been on autopilot and saying, I retire at 65. And unfortunately, too many Americans lose their health and shortly after turning 65. And I want to see you take full advantage of the youth of your senior years. And that's why I made this video here, five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.